field pennycress, fanweed, French weed, mustard, even bastard cress. That is a smattering of some of the common names that the field pennycress is known by. This is a common Eurasian weed and it occurs throughout North America as well as South America, Australia, and of course throughout Asia and Europe. Let's see, a little breezy here today, so I'm going to do my best to try to get some close-ups here. Here we go. Now, the seeds generally germinate in the autumn, and they overwinter. In the fall, when they do germinate, they grow basil rosette formation of leaves. And even though seeds can germinate, in the spring or summer, the leaves typically don't form that basal rosette formation and they only develop the blooming stems. The, I pulled one out here, there it is. <laughs> the root system, let me get rid of the dandelion. There we go. The root system is very shallow. From here to here is basically maybe about an inch and a half. So it has that central tap root and it is surrounded by smaller fibrous roots. Each flower, and I don't know if there's very many flowers here left now, uh, it is basically the end of the season almost in terms of the flower growth, but each flower is about an eighth of an inch across and they have the four petal characteristic of flowers in the mustard family just like the winter crest over here. Okay. So once these flowers have run their course, the seed pods, let's see, this is gonna be, let me pull this out, it might be easier. There we go. The seed pods are developed. Let me see if I can get a close up. There we go. Alrighty. So in each individual pod here, there are, let, let me get back and focus here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> there are about three to eight seeds, but within, um, before long, each plant can produce and it depends on the size. This one's pretty small, but there are other plants that will produce way more seeds. And typically each plant can produce anywhere from 1,000 to 15,000 seeds. And that remains, and these seeds remain viable in the soil for at least five years, and even up to 20 years under ideal conditions. Interestingly enough, the seeds here, or the inside of the seeds, they contain a glycoside, and this is poisonous to animals. In fact, cows that have been known to eat these have tainted milk, and even the meat tastes off. Okay, so when you bruise these, they actually smell not too terribly, well, <laughs> not too terribly pleasant, but it is somewhat reminiscent of some of the garlic mustard, like garlic mustard or other pungent garlic or mustard plants. When these have young shoots, they're edible and they can be eaten raw in salads or cooked like spinach. The seeds are edible in small quantities. And of course the leaves are edible as well. This plant is high in vitamin C and riboflavin. And it also has a lot of protein, fiber, and amino acids. So what it also is well known for is that it has a large amount of sulfur in its proteins. And this is considered very beneficial for protein digestion. Now I'm going to show you some more over here. And 
here we go. You can tell the hot sun that we've had has basically roasted the leaves. So these are definitely, if you were to eat them, there's very slim pickings. And this is a plant that tends to cause farmers a great deal of headaches. Although known to be more of a plant that invades farms, farmlands, it also likes waste areas. Field pennycress.